So welcome everyone again. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Tonight we're going to be designing a pumpkin flower arrangement and it's going to be perfect. So at the end of the webinar you're going to be leaving with a flower arrangement that's going to be perfect for your fall decorating. Um, I have my pumpkin, my flowers, my floral foam ready to go. Um, I hope you folks have it ready as well. If you didn't get a chance to scoop it out, uh, you can go ahead and start doing that now uh, before the webinar. I actually kind of goofed and got a big giant pumpkin, so we're going to see how this turns out. <laughs> so as event planners and designers, we know you're really creative. Uh, so we want you to be the first to know uh, about our brand new floral design course. This course we're going to be launching in November, and we're really excited about it. Uh, we hope you are too. Um, we are actually just going to launch a quick poll here now. So if you want to receive updates on the course launch, just hit yes when that pops up. And then uh, we'll also be going over some more information um, towards the end of the webinar. Oh, another Annie. I'm glad you're excited. <laughs> That's awesome. We're excited too. <laughs> so we're going to pop that poll here up now. So the demo is going to take around 30 minutes and then we'll have about a 10 minute Q&A session at the end. All right, so now I have the pleasure of introducing our special host for this evening. Her name is Renee Tucci and she's a freelance floral designer, international educator and consultant. She's also a member of the American Institute of Floral Designers and the Professional Floral Communicators International. We're really excited to have her here with us because she was instrumental in helping us develop this course. Um, and if you enroll in the course, you can also request her to be your tutor. So I'm going to be turning off my camera when the demo starts so that we can focus on what Renee is showing us. But without further ado, a very warm QC welcome to Renee. Thank you. Thank you so much, Annie. Um, what a pleasure it is to be here tonight um, with the QC family. I'm so thrilled to be kind of coming into the fold. Um, we have been working on this program for the past few months, and um, it's really been just wonderful to see all of the efforts um, that the QC staff have, have put into this, see it come to fruition. Um, and so we're going to celebrate that tonight by playing with flowers. Um, that phrase, playing with flowers, is actually uh, somewhat despised by uh, real deal floral designers because it sort of makes us feel like maybe what we do is not serious and important and we don't think of it as art. But on nights like tonight, we really do get to just play with flowers and I hope that you enjoy it. Um, and then, you know, time to get serious and learn about the principles and elements of design once you enroll in the class. Um, so we're going to be making a pumpkin design. And as Annie said, if you have any questions, please um, type them in while I'm going. Uh, I have invited her to interrupt me as we go here, just uh, so that I make sure I don't miss anything. Um, I would love for this to be interactive. So um, I, if, you, if I miss anything, just make sure to point that out. So uh, at, in your supply list that I sent to you, uh, we asked you to get a little, a, a Jackie Little or a small pumpkin, and hopefully you've already cut the top off and scooped it out. We know that's the fun part, right? So hopefully you had someone help you do that or it was easy for you. So we're gonna take our top and we're just gonna set that aside for now. Uh, we do need to start uh, with, by creating a liner in our pumpkin because anytime that you have a fresh vessel and you introduce water to it, um, of course, something like a pumpkin or fruit or vegetable, you know, it tends to degrade and rot. So if you add water to that, the uh, process happens even faster. So what we're gonna do is put a liner on the inside and hopefully that slows the process and you get to enjoy your pumpkin even longer. So you should also have some saran wrap on hand or some, um, some plastic wrap on hand. Uh, so I invite you now to take your plastic wrap and cut yourself a length of about uh, 24 inches, something like that. It's plenty more than you're going to need. And then carefully 
fold it in half before it clings to itself because this tends to do that, right? So if you fold it in half and create a double layer, and then take your saran wrap and just press it into the pumpkin and try to make sure any folds that start to happen, try to pull those up and make sure that you have a, a straight liner all the way around. This is going to help keep the moisture out of the pumpkin itself. And I did want to point out, um, this will work. Uh, in, in retail floristry, we also have another mechanic that we use. Um, this may look familiar. Uh, it's used often when you're wrapping plants and things like that. It's called, it can be called plant foil, but this is actually called polyfoil because instead of being just foil, uh, it actually has a plastic liner on the inside. So again, that guards against moisture escaping from the arrangement area into your pumpkin. So um, if you were so inclined, you could request polyfoil. Uh, that would do the same thing. If not, just a scotch better. This is uh, industrial strength plastic um, liner. So I'll set that aside. Okay, so now you should have your pumpkin uh, lined with your, your plastic wrap and you should have a piece of floral foam nearby. So what we have to do is uh, trim our floral foam so that it fits into the hole that you've cut. Pretty obvious. So if you take a knife, and what I usually do is set the foam sort of right on top of where I want it to be and eyeball up where I might need to start to cut it. So I'm gonna make a little mark here I'll move it to my work surface and give it a trim. Even if your knife doesn't go all the way across, as long as, you, as you've scored it pretty well, you can just pop it apart. It comes apart very easy. It's pretty soft, as you can feel. And then it may still be too wide going the other way. So just make a trim however much you need to. Now, you do want it to be almost slightly larger than you think. Um, that way, when you push it in, it will actually be held in place by tension. Um, we don't want it to be smaller than the hole because then it will wobble. So you, as the saying goes, you can always cut off more, but you can't add on. So if you're not sure, just trim a little bit, try it, see if it fits, and trim a little bit more if you need to. Now, the other thing you can do is obviously we've got a round hole here and we've got square edges on our foam. So if you take your knife and just carve the corners off of your foam, just round the sides a little bit, that will help it get into the hole as well. All right, so I think I need to cut just slightly more off of mine. We want it to fit snug in there, but we don't want to force it. Okay. And once you're happy with the size, you can pull it back out and drop it in some water and let it soak. Um, you always want to have a reservoir of water that is larger than the piece of foam that you're trying to soak. And whenever you're soaking floral foam, what you don't want to do, resist the urge, because it is very tempting, but resist the urge to push it down. You never want to push the foam into the water, although that will hasten the absorption. Um, it will also cause air pockets inside of the foam that you can't see. So then when you add your flowers in, there's danger of those stem ends. It, there's danger of the stem ends ending up in the air pocket within the foam and not drinking any water. So of course, that would be no good. So as you can see, it absorbs pretty quickly. Uh, it changes color as it absorbs. So it goes from a, dark, a light green to a dark green. And you can actually see uh, once it's completely soaked, um, it'll be good to go. The, the, the foam of the past, the, uh, you know, a few decades ago, it would take foam really long time to absorb water. But the foam that's on the market now, is it absorbs really quickly. And sometimes you can also see water bubbles coming up when um, it's absorbing, and that's good. That means the water is really getting inside the, the piece of foam. So once you've got your foam fully changed in color, pull it out of the water, 
and set it into your pumpkin. Maybe pull up your, your plastic wrap a little bit before you push it in and just make sure you've got a good liner going here. Okay. Now, we do want the foam to extend above the pumpkin slightly, but not too much. So what I'm gonna do is take my knife and I'm gonna make a horizontal cut. So I'm gonna go about a half an inch above the rim of the pumpkin and slice my foam off. And you'll see it cuts just a little bit different when it's wet, but it's still very easy to cut through. And if you want to spin the pumpkin as you cut, just to get the straightest cut possible, you can certainly do that. I work on a, a turntable that makes things a little bit easier. If you have one nearby, you're certainly welcome to grab that. So your foam should look like this, slightly taller than the pumpkin and filling as much of the hole that we cut as possible. At this point, you can put any of the foam supplies aside because we're all set there. Okay, now any excess plastic wrap that's hanging off, just take it and tuck it in. We could cut it, um, but you'll actually get a better seal if you just sort of jam it around the floral foam and tuck it in. And that will also help keep the moisture in as well. Now you do want it to be tucked down low enough that you can access the floral foam from all sides and the top. So you have clear path to the foam. Okay, great. Now, if you wanted to use the top of your pumpkin, you could very easily do that. And I'll just show you that real quick. So I have a bamboo skewer here and, um, and I have the top for my pumpkin. So I'm gonna actually cut this in half because we, would, we always want two pieces of skewer. And when I cut my skewer, I'm going to cut it on an angle. So a bamboo skewer comes with a pointy tip. That's what you feed the strawberries or the vegetables on before you make a shish kebab. But when you cut it, you want your second point to have a tip as well, a pointy tip. So cut that on an angle and then take the bamboo skewer and press it up into the top. Now you don't want to press so hard that it goes clear through, but you will feel the resistance when you get to the center of the top and that's when you can stop. And then take your second one and put that in as well. And so now you've got two little legs on your pumpkin top. Um, and I would always recommend doing two. If you just do one, there's a chance that the top will spin. But anytime you wanna add fruit to an arrangement or something like that, this is the trick that makes it happen. Stick a skewer in it, and then you've got some legs that can push into the foam, okay? I'm, not, I'm gonna leave the top off for now, but if you wanna add your top in later, that's how you can do it. So let's grab our flowers. I did send a list of, of flowers to have on hand. So if you have them, great. If you have something similar, that's great too. I'm gonna just put this together in a real general way so that whatever you have on hand should work. Now I'm gonna start with uh, some limelight hydrangea. And this is just a piece of hydrangea that actually was cut from the garden. And um, I actually let it dry. So this is, uh, you can probably hear it. This is a dried version, which I love because it, it has a little bit more of a rusty tone to it um, as far as the color palette goes, which is perfect for this time of year. Um, and it's going to last a really long time because it's already dry. So I'm gonna take my hydrangea and I'm gonna cut it up into three smaller parts. So from the center area, I'm gonna take my floral clippers or snips and I'm gonna go into the middle. I'm gonna bring this close to the camera. Go into the middle and I'm going to cut the top out. There we go. So now I've got the top. And then from the center area, I'm going to cut another section. Now I've got the middle. And then I've got the bottom piece that's still attached to the main stem. If you have any leaves on your stem, you can go ahead and remove those. Okay, and now what we're gonna do is base our design with the hydrangea. 
Now, if you don't have hydrangea on hand and you have um, a few carnations, that was, I, I think I noted that as a substitute, you would just treat these um, just like, you would treat your carnations just like I'm going to treat my hydrangea. So you'll cut that from the stem. And what you want is a stem that's about an inch long so that when you press it into the foam, it can really drink. Um, now, for the hydrangea, the top and the middle section, they're going to have pieces left on them from the stem. So you wanna go ahead and discard those. It means we have to sacrifice some little blooms, but it's necessary so that the stem is clear to be added into the foam. So once you've got your little tuft ready, you just press it right into the foam. And I've got three pieces here. So what I'm gonna do is, as if I'm, Looking from the top, I want to make a triangle. So I've got one piece here, then I'm going to put a second piece here, and a third piece here, okay? So I'll take my middle section, make sure I have a, a clear enough stem to work with here, and spinning my pumpkin a little bit, and add my hydrangea in on the second leg of our triangle. Now this happens to be a, a really beautiful piece, and it's also curving this way, so I'm going to make sure that this is on the outside of the pumpkin to help add to that curved look of our design. We like, we're making a round arrangement to top our round pumpkin. So it's a repetition of form, which is important in floral design. It helps the viewer really appreciate um, all the sh different shapes that are in the design. So now I've got two pieces of the hydrangea in. And now I'll take my third, and even though it's got a big hole in the center from where I cut out of it, that's no problem. We'll fill that in with other flowers. And again, we're going to add this piece right into our foam. And very quickly, my foam has been almost covered. The, foam, the flower foam is a mechanic, and anytime we have mechanics in design, unless they're a decorative mechanic, which those do exist, um, we definitely want to make sure those mechanics are covered by the time we're finished with the creation. Uh, otherwise, it just doesn't look professional. So now that we've got our hydrangea in or our carnations or whatever it is that you're using as your base, we can move on to our next flower. So our next flower is going to be the uh, chrysanthemum. Now I happen to have here a brown Viking chrysanthemums. So they look like miniature sunflowers, except they're brown. And the great thing about chrysanthemums is that they're multi-bloomed. So each little stem off of the main stem here is called a lateral. And anytime you have lots of laterals on a main stem, you get a lot of great bang for your buck. I call it a bang for your buck flower. So things like the carnation, I'm sorry, the, the pom-poms, the chrysanthemums, um, mini carnations, spray roses, alstroemeria, um, even lilies are a great bang for your buck flower because you get so many blooms on each stem. So I'm gonna take this chrysanthemum and I'm, I'm using my floral knife because that's what I'm most comfortable designing with, but you can certainly use clippers. I'm gonna go ahead and cut all those laterals off the main stem just so that they're a little bit of an easier length for me to work with. I know I want my design to be short, so we'll just get, get rid of all that length right off the top. And then I'm gonna go through the blooms that I removed and just make sure that they don't have any uh, leaves on the stems that might otherwise get pressed into the foam. You would wanna remove any leaves. We don't want to leave extra uh, bits on the stem because when you push the stem into the foam, if there are extra bits on the stem, it will cause the hole to be larger than it really needs to be, which will allow room for bacteria to enter into the foam, which will eventually go up into the stem of the flower and cause the flower to perish sooner than you would want. So we like our stems to be clear and clean and have really um, distinct holes when we push them into our foam. Now, if you're not sure how long to cut your flower, what I recommend is hold the flower next to the pumpkin. And now I want, my goal is to have all of the flowers be within the base of this hydrangea. So I, I'm not going to have them sticking up. I want them to be within the hydrangea. So I'm going to hold it next to the pumpkin until 
the daisy top or the chrysanthemum top is resting right about the top of the hydrangea. And I'm gonna follow the stem back down the pumpkin until it's about an inch into the pumpkin. And that's where I'm gonna cut it. That's how I know how long to cut my stem. This way, when I actually go to insert it right through the top, I know that the stem is long enough to reach, not only hit the foam, but actually go into the foam. You'd always, it's always good to have your flowers go about an inch or two inches at least into the foam so that they can drink enough water. So I'm gonna spin my pumpkin around and do the same thing. Now every stem of chrysanthemums is a little bit different. You're going to have uh, larger blooms on each stem. Then you'll get some smaller, more closed buds on there. And I would just uh, invite you to spin your pumpkin around and just start adding your chrysanthemums wherever you want them. You can't mess this design up, I promise you. This is, a, it's flowers, it's pretty, it's a stress relief. Don't stress about where every single bloom is going to be. That defeats the purpose. So I'm actually adding a lot of my bloom into the hydrangea. So if I actually, uh, I take the stem and I'll go right into the middle of the hydrangea and it feeds through there and it hits the foam. And that will help create a cohesive design. So I'm getting there. I have two stems to work with here, so I'm gonna pull my second one out. Renee, can I jump in and ask a quick question? Of course. Thanks. Um, so I was always under the impression of when we're cutting flower stems to do them on an angle. Is that something that we should be doing to put it in the foam as well? Yes, excellent question, thank you so much. Um, yes, you should cut it on an angle, number one, because if you're doing what we're doing, which is we're actually putting the flowers through another flower, it will help you just get through that mass. And number two, uh, it will help you pierce into the flower foam easier. And number three, there's three reasons. Um, <laughs> if you were, if you, if this were a clear vase arrangement or a vase arrangement of any type where there wasn't floral foam and the stem was just in the water, the, the benefit of having an angle on the cut is that if your stem makes it all the way to the bottom of the vase and it's just resting flat, uh, mm -hmm. it can stop the water from being absorbed as easily. So if you have an angled cut, all of a sudden now you've opened up all that area for the water to go up into the flower. So it's a multi-pronged um, benefit of cutting your stems on an angle. So thank you for asking that question. Awesome, good to know. Now, you don't have to use all of the chrysanthemums you have on hand if you get to a point where you think, oh, maybe I wanna stop now. Um, in fact, I think I'm at that point. I'm gonna stop now, even though I have a few more buds and blooms here. I'm gonna set them aside, because I can always add them back in later, but I wanna move on to my other flowers and see um, how it comes together with them, because I may not need to use all of these, and then I can put them in another design, which is great. So now we're gonna move on to um, our mini carnations. And actually, you know what? No, we're gonna move on to our hypericum berry next. So if you have the hypericum berry, this color happens to be red, um, but it's also available in lots of colors, green, peach, brown, cream, pink, lots of colors. Uh, I love the hypericum berries, especially for this time of year because they're just so perfect for fall. Um, now what you wanna do is if there's any leaves on the stem, we're gonna go ahead and remove those. The leaves are um, going to basically get in the way of this design. I don't wanna muck up this flower heavy design with the leaves. And also they will um, sort of turn first. They will start to uh, show their age before the berries will. So we're just gonna discard those leaves and just have our berries. And we have two berries. So I would, Look at your pumpkin and see, okay, where's a, a hole? Where can I use a, uh, a pop of this color and this texture? And I definitely have a hole right here. So I'm gonna take my first hypericum berry and again, I'm gonna hold it where I think I want it and trace the stem back down, give it a cut on an angle, and then add the berry in. 
Now, don't be afraid to actually put your stem in on an angle. It doesn't just have to be up and down. Uh, if you put it in on an angle, it will help us get that rounded look that we're looking for. If you only put everything up and down, um, then you'll have a very up and down design. So use all the sides of the foam to your benefit. They don't, the flowers don't just have to go in the top, they can go in on the sides, they can go in horizontal, however you want them so that you can get that shape. That's why we left the foam a little bit taller in the beginning. So I've got my first hypericum berry in there, and now I'm going to move on to my second one. Now, my second berry is a little more fruitful, and it actually happens to have two distinct sections, and because we're working with a small design, I'm going to be able to actually split this into two, which will result into three overall stems. So if you happen to have a stem like mine, where it has, I'm trying to put this so you guys can see it, where it has a, a distinct section and then maybe a lower section, you can dissect that stem. So from the top down, I'm going to cut the top out right where the next section begins. And when I did that, I was careful to cut as close as possible to the stem so that I don't leave any little nubs sticking up or evidence that, that there was another section there. We want it to look as natural as possible. So now I've got my top piece that I'm going to add in here, a little bit lower and on the side. And now I've done that opposite of my first placement so that I have balance. I've got a little bit of the red color on one side. I'm gonna put a little of the red color and that texture on the other side. And then I've got my, my bonus piece, my lower piece. I'm gonna put that right in the middle. Okay, so that's how mine's looking. Getting there, getting there. Okay. Next up, we have our mini carnations. Now, this is the last flower that we have on hand. So you want to use this to fill in any last holes that you might have. So make sure you're giving your pumpkin a spin and see, um, is there a gap here, a gap there? Uh, additionally, you want to make sure you get your color balance. So even if you don't have a hole here, but you need a pop of that color, go ahead and add it in because that's, that, that's what will create balance. So for the mini carnations, this is another great bang for your butt flower. We've got all these flowers on the main stem. Because I know my stems don't need to be that long, just like we did with the chrysanthemums, I'm going to cut them off all that extra length and just work with the shorter pieces here. Always, always giving our stems a fresh cut before we put them into our foam, especially if you've just broken your piece off. If you break it off the main stem, that's okay to get it to a length that's a little easier to work with, but still always give it a fresh cut because that breaking of the stem um, just sort of tatters the end of it. It doesn't give it a nice fresh cut. Um, so again, that will help with the water absorption. And all of these things are what help keep our flowers lasting a really long time, which is the goal. So continue to add your mini carnations in. Spinning as you go. Now, as you add your blooms to the foam, you might feel some resistance. So the best thing to do is to hold your stem with your thumb and finger as close to the foam as you can when you're pushing it in. Give it a push until you feel that it's gone into the foam. Then adjust your fingers up the stem a little bit. Push it again adjust up and push it again. So keep moving your fingers up the stem so that you're giving the stem some support and some structure as you're pushing it in. Um, and that will help it not break or snap. You may at this point be finding that your stems are running into each other inside of the floral foam. That happens. Um, so if you're not happy with where it is ending up or it's not going in far enough, you can go ahead and pull it out just move it a scotch to the right or the left and try to put it in again. Um, you want to try to minimize that. We do have to do it from time to time. You want to try to minimize doing that though, because then that first hole that you made is just an empty hole, which is an area for bacteria to enter, as we talked about earlier. 
So definitely move your stems as you need to to make a pleasing design, but be aware that you want to minimize that. Additionally, with your mini carnations and with large carnations, if they happen to be on the tighter side and not fully open, a trick for that is to actually take your finger and thumb and squeeze right underneath the flower and fluff the top petals apart. You can be, I don't want to use the word rough, but you can be uh, rough with them and it won't hurt. Um, you definitely just open that up and it will become much more showy. It does not hurt the life of the carnation, so don't be afraid to do that. Renee? Um, yes. What if you have um, buds that haven't opened yet? Is that going to affect the arrangement at all? No, not at all. Um, so, in fact, I have one here that's just starting to crack, just starting to show a tiny bit of color. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and add that in. Um, it, there are some that, when they're harvested, they're never going to open. They're just a bud. I would still add that in for texture. Um, it's going to be along the lines of our hypericum berry as far as shape and texture. Um, so you can add that in. If you'd rather not because it's not adding anything to your design as far as color goes, then you can go ahead and skip it. Um, but it's certainly not going to help or, or hurt your design. Awesome. Thanks. Little extra bonus. Bonus pieces. <laughs> So at this point, when you're almost done, don't be afraid to even pick your pumpkin up and really look at it from all sides. Um, one of the mechanic culprits I see a lot, and actually I have it here, is right at the point where the pumpkin meets the oasis, you can kind of see the mechanics a little bit. You can see the foam. So when you still have a few flowers left, that's when you want to look for that, because that's where you should put your flowers to fill that hole. Now, as designers, we, we stand while we work, and so it's often, you know, hard to see down here when you're looking over top of it. So you have to remember, especially if you're making something like a centerpiece, um, the recipient is going to put it on their table, and then they're going to sit for dinner. So what is the view that they see as opposed to the view that you see when you're working on it? Um, so those are things that you need to think about. All right. Now, if your pumpkin hasn't completely filled up with the flowers that you have, you can certainly add things to it. Um, if you have greenery around your house, even on your bushes outside, um, this particular type of greenery is called ruscus, but um, you can use little pieces of, I don't know, if you have a boxwood bush outside, just go clip a few pieces and you can add some small pieces of greenery in to fill any uh, remaining holes that you might have. Anything that you have around will work for this uh, occasion. Now, I have run out of product and I am in luck because my design is full. If I wanted to add my pumpkin top, I could do that. I could do that while I'm working and design around it, or I could do it at the end and just sort of push it in there. Either one works. But while you guys are finishing up, I did have a few other uh, fun with pumpkin ideas to show you. And let me put this over here. Okay. Let me just clear my table here. An organized designer is a profitable designer. So I'm constantly clearing my workspace so that I can see what I have and what I'm working with to make sure that I'm on task. Okay, so here's a fun project. I have some pumpkins here, and hopefully you can see that I have got the letters QC. Can you see that, Annie? Hopefully that looks like a QC. Um, oh my so these, goodness, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> so these are just uh, regular pumpkins, you know, nothing special. Uh, and I've actually taken a piece of wire. So this is a 20 gauge wire. And I cut a small piece of that with my wire cutters. 
and I simply pierced it into the meat of the pumpkin. And then you can use lots of different flowers for this. I would choose a long lasting flower. These again are the mini carnations that we were working with. I plucked the flower head right off of the stem so there's no stem left. And I'm just piercing the flower right onto that, pierce, that piece of wire that I pushed into the pumpkin. And that's how I created the letters. So basically, it, the technique is called piercing, but you're basically impaling flowers onto the wires. So this is really fun to do for events. Um, of course, it's not a long-term situation. These flowers are obviously not in water. So depending on what you choose, they may last a few days or they may last a few hours. But if you're uh, doing the bride and groom's monogram or initials, you could do that. Um, or, you know, any corporate logos and things like that, you can get really creative with, with how you dress your pumpkins. So that's one fun idea. Um, another one is actually this is a succulent pumpkin. So this is a, a white pumpkin, which they're, you know, all the rage. The pump white pumpkins are all the rage. And I basically took a piece of moss, sheet moss, and I laid that on top. I, I, you should glue the moss down. And then I took a bunch of different succulents, all different styles, sizes, and varieties, and I cut them out of their pots, and I hot glued them into the tuft of moss that I have on top of the pumpkin. And they're gonna last like that through the season. So they'll last weeks, if not months, and you'll see that they'll actually start to push roots out above where the glue is. So when you're done with this and you're sick of looking at it, um, you can actually pluck the succulents out and replant them again. So it's the gift that keeps on giving. I just added some other little um, uh, decorative parts to this. I've got some pieces of bark and some little tufts of grass uh, just to give it a little more dimension. But the great thing about a pumpkin when you do it like this and even even though we've pierced this pumpkin a little bit, it's so minor that these pumpkins are going to last weeks, if not months. Whereas the pumpkin that we just cut and, and designed into, that's going to degrade pretty quickly. So make sure that you put your pumpkin on a plate or some kind of liner. Do not just put it directly on your table um, because it may start to get a little gooey underneath. Um, and, and each pumpkin variety is a little different. It's, it's funny, some, sometimes I make one and I sit it on my table just to test it and see how long it's gonna last. And I'll walk by it for a week and every day I think, wow, that's still looking great. And eventually I'll go down to pick it up and it doesn't feel great, but it looks great. So you need to keep an eye on that. Um, another thing you can do with this is actually, I didn't glue this down because I wanted to show you another option. So. I'm gonna pick this up and take it off, but this is the underside. It's just a piece of moss that I've glued into. And I have another version, same technique with the moss and the glue, but these are just dried flowers that have been glued onto it. And again, I would glue that first layer of moss so it doesn't fall off the pumpkin, but for tonight's demonstration purposes, um, hopefully you can see I've got some dried hydrangea in here, some bleached bell cups. I've even got some um, tillandsia swirls, some air plant pieces in here. Um, and this is all just going to go on and on and on. Dried flowers are so on trend. So this is like a really great trendy piece to make. Again, just some hot glue on your dried flower. Pierce it into that tuft of moss that you put in the top. You could also add a piece of the uh, floral foam that's meant for dried flowers. It's called dry flower foam. Not to be confused with what we use today. That's a different foam. This is a thicker foam. Um, you could glue a piece of foam onto the top of the pumpkin and then add your flowers if you'd like. So it really just depends on how, how you feel when you, when you go to make it. And then my last example for you here. Oh, second to last. I have this little guy, speaking of Tillandsia, how cute is he? So this is just uh, one of these gourds and I just sliced the top off. And to be honest, I didn't even scoop it out. I just took my little air plant and shoved it in there. 
Um, and I told myself that the extra stuff on the inside, that moisture was going to help keep the Tillandsia alive. <laughs> Um, but this is such a fun little little table sitter. Um, this would be really fun at place settings if you were entertaining, maybe in a non-COVID world, or if you're having a small dinner party, um, this is a really fun takeaway for your guests and very budget conscious. You know, you can get both of these pieces very um, cheaply. And then my last piece, this is what I like to call a pumpkin sammy, short for sandwich. So basically I took the same pumpkin that we worked in earlier and instead of cutting the top, I just sliced it clear in half and pulled the top off. And I lined the inside just like we did, put a little block of floral foam, except I left the foam really tall so that I would not only have room for my flowers, but then also for the pumpkin top to set on. So in fact, I think I skewered it in here just to make sure it would stay. Here we go. So I did skewer the top in there. And you can actually see the inside of the design. So I've got the floral foam and I just pushed the flowers in all around the sides. And this is really effective design because you need very few materials to fill the center area. But again, a great bang for your buck piece. Really easy to make, but impactful. So that's the pumpkin Sammy. And Annie, that's all I have to show you tonight. All right, Renee, thank you so much. Um, that was great. I love the QC ones, they're so cute. <laughs> That is awesome. I'm just going to turn my video back on here now. All right. Hi, everyone. Again, thank you so much, Renee. That was awesome. <laughs> Thanks. It was really fun. I hope, um, I hope I get to see some of you in the, the courses. It would be my honor to tutor you. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, we would love to see everyone's pumpkins that they designed tonight. I can show you mine. I mean, oh, let me see okay. it. Okay. I don't know if you can see it. I had like a big giant pumpkin. I didn't oh, nice. one, but this nice job. <laughs> oh, I'm so proud of you. And I also, I just want to say real quick, if yours doesn't look like mine, please don't beat yourself up. This is not my first day. <laughs> so give yourself some time to experiment with it and see how it all works and then just try it again. Exactly. Practice makes perfect. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Definitely. Um, so for all of our students and inquirers, like I said, I would love to see yours. Um, we do have our virtual classrooms as well. Uh, so if you haven't already joined, I'm going to get Charlotte to drop a link uh, below for you. Um, so with the virtual classroom, even if you're not a student with us, you can join for up to three weeks and it's a great resource for you to connect with uh, your tutor. So even Renee, um, uh, you can share advice, um, ask questions, bounce back ideas off each other. Um, so again, if you want to join, I think yeah, Charlotte just posted the links there too. So we would love to see your flower arrangements and see how you guys did. And now I just want to talk a little bit more about our new floral design course. Um, so this course is going to go over six units with uh, over five hours of tutorials led by Renee, of course. Uh, you'll also have access to two professional manuals that are going to walk you through step by step different floral arrangements. Um, you'll learn everything from flower anatomy to floral care, designing bouquets, centerpieces, corsages. Um, it also includes a full business training section, so uh, it'll prepare you to work as a freelance florist uh, for events, or you can even open your own floral shop as well. Um, so if you sign up for the launch announcement as well, you'll also get a special offer that is thrown in there your way too. We can just launch the poll one more time. If you already answered, you can just close it up there. So we're just going to launch that poll one more time. Perfect. Again, if you've already answered the poll, you can just ignore it. All right, so now we're going to go on to our Q&A session with Renee. All right. Um, 
Perfect. So our first question. Um, so Renee, could you speak to the benefits of floral design um, training for both event planners and designers? Of course, sure. So um, uh, that's a two-pronged approach. Um, floral design is is such an, a wonderful uh, a field of work. Um, it's really thrilling to be involved with it, uh, to work with an impermanent uh, material like flowers and to bring that to life um, is, is really special. Um, it definitely requires education though. It's, it's not something you can just wake up and start doing. You have to practice, you have to learn the principles and elements of design. You have to understand what works together and what doesn't. Um, and that is really handy if you're an event designer because then when you come to your client, and maybe you're leading your client to um, an appointment with a floral designer, you can help them decide what it is that they want. Now, I would caution that you please let the floral designer, you know, do what they do. They're a professional for a reason. Um, but you can help coach your client through the discussion and help them understand, well, I understand why the florist is telling you you can't have sunflowers in January because they're really not available. Or, you know, this flower isn't really gonna look good with that flower because you have an understanding of how those flowers work together. So it can be really beneficial to event planners um, and it's just absolutely vital for anybody that wants to go into the floral industry. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, it's good to know, especially if a flower's not in season, you want to be able to educate your clients so they know yeah. exactly what they're getting getting into. Yeah, and especially, I didn't even mention budget, but that's a huge part of it. And, you know, what flowers kind of live on what tier as far as budget is concerned. And so you can help a client understand what they're going to get for their money before you even get to the floral professional. So that can really help weed out some of the heartache you might feel down the road between you and your client when you're planning an event. Of course, of course. All right, and um, what are your like favorite floral elements to teach? Oh, oh, that's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I really enjoy sympathy design. Um, it, that maybe that sounds morbid, but um, I, I like to be able to bring a touch of the creative into a tribute that's helping a family celebrate the life of a loved one. Um, and you can really, it's really just about beauty at that point um, and, and just making things extra special. Of course, who doesn't like to walk away from a big wedding setup at the end of a Saturday and see some fabulousness? Um, that's always wonderful too, but that comes with quite a bit of hard work. Um, so that's, you know, depending on the job, it's not always my favorite. Um, but I also, I have to say, I like to teach um, form in design. So um, I like to focus on round or um, or vertical or horizontal or, you know, uh, triangles and things like that. Um, because I think each of those forms has a different place in um, everyday floristry and in home decor. And once you understand how the flowers fit together to create a certain form, um, it's just, uh, just a matter of plugging in the flowers at that point. Nice. Awesome. All right, I'm just gonna take a look to see if we have any other questions. If anyone else has any questions, feel free to pop it in the Q&A section there. If not, if you do have any questions later on down the line, feel free to pop them in the virtual classroom. Uh, you can either give us a call uh, we're available through live chat as well. We'd love to hear from you. If you have any other questions, just let us know. All right. So once again, I would just like to thank you so much, Renee, for um, helping us with these flower arrangements here tonight. I had such a fun time. I hope everyone else did here too. Um, again, we'd love to see your flower arrangements. So please post photos in our virtual classrooms. We'd love to see them and share them with everyone. Uh, oh, I think we have another 
question here. I think we have time for maybe a couple more questions. I think we're doing okay. Um, so I have someone that's asking how you got started in floral design. Ah, oh, that's a great question. And in fact, I do touch on this in, um, in one of the videos that we have in the course. Um, but I actually started out at a local grocery store. I was checking groceries and they needed help in the flower department. And uh, I ended up over there when I was in high school. And I just sort of looked around and thought, well, this is all right. Maybe I can do something with this. And, um, and then I went on to, to pursue a, a Bachelor of Science in Ornamental Horticulture um, while focusing on floriculture as the emphasis. And I've been working in a flower shop ever since that time in high school, so more than 20 years now, um, and just worked my way up from jumping in dumpsters and sweeping floors to, um, you know, now I'm teaching. So it's, it's really been uh, wonderful. I'm very blessed. That's awesome. Yeah, a lot of hard work uh, brought you to this point yeah. here, I'm yeah. sure. It is not as glamorous as it looks, but this job has tremendous benefits. It seems like it can be very rewarding, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. All right, so once again, thank you so much, Renee, and thank you all for watching tonight. All right, so I think that is everything. So once again, thank you so much, Renee, and we will you. see you all soon. Thank you. It was my pleasure. Thanks, everyone. Have a great night. Hey, take care.